Frank. You've tuned into the Belly Up Podcast for the week of January 21, 2018, episode 65. From the city by the Salish Sea, I am AJ Barce. And in the blue corner wearing nothing but black, I am Chris Powell. On this episode, your crime-fighting technologists are turning analog explorers this episode. This one's for the watch fam out there listening. This is the Bellingham Podcast. No, this is not the intro to 60 Minutes. <laughs> this is a watch show. How's it going, AJ? Good, Chris. How are you doing? Uh, Rockin' with Dawkin, and that is the 80s band. Yes. Rockin' with Dawkin? Wow, dude. Yeah, I got your references from the 80s right here. <sighs> you never cease to astonish me. So this episode... Uh, so. Here's the here's the thing. The Belly and Podcast, we're a variety show. We cover everything from tech to gear to the outdoors to the Pacific Northwest to this little niche that TikToks, and that's watches. And so with everything that's been going on this week, uh, which we'll hit on in a second, as well as some personal accomplishments in my camp, this is dedicated to everybody who follows the hashtag WatchFam. This episode, number 65, is for y'all. Hi, WatchFam. So the watch fam, if you don't know this, it, this is a hashtag that's on many a social networks, predominantly on Instagram, and it is for the watch enthusiasts, the aficionados, the collectors, pretty much anything that has a heartbeat that goes TikTok, you will find t- this tag show up. And it's just a group of men and women around the world who just have an enthusiasm for watches, watch paraphernalia, and everything around orology. And so that's what this episode's about, because we're starting up at the top of the show. We are not a news show. But if we were, we'd do it a heck of a lot better. Most of the time. Uh, we're going to start off with something that's hitting the headlines out of Geneva, and that is SIHH. We talked about this uh, about this time last year, and it stands for, and you have to pardon my, my French. Pardon uh, our French. Pardon uh, my Francais. Uh, Salon International de la Haute Orange. And uh, SIHH for everybody else that uh, can't speak fluent French. High Society Watches. <laughs> yeah. Loosely translated. Seriously, this is when the watchmakers converge. And this is, I guess this would be kind of kind of like the CES of horology, wouldn't you say? Like, This is where all of the new products and the, wow, check this out, products in the watch world, this is where they go and it gets plenty of coverage yeah. on all web, print, uh, video, and audio sites, as it turns out. Right, right. And what's cool is that it, this this really is kind of, you see a lot of skunk works that come out of this. You see a lot of prototypes or proof of concepts and stuff. And we got a couple that we're going to hit on. But the first that really kind of rocked my horological brain is Elange and Songa. They made the triple split this year. Now, what's this triple split for those of us playing at home, AJ? Okay, so if you are a person who likes watches, usually you have a three-hand watch. You've got an hour and a minute and a second. Now, you may also be someone who is a chronograph lover. That's the thing that looks like a stopwatch on your wrist. Matter of fact, that's what it is. If you're familiar with, like, um, the Speedmaster or any of those racing shows, you'll see, like, those racers, and they've got, like, three little gauges on their, their watch and stuff. That's a chronograph. And all it is is basically a stopwatch. You're able to do interval timing of hours, minutes, uh, and seconds, and you're able to measure it. You have a pusher that you can start the the tick, and you can stop the tick. Well, you have something that's also called a split chronograph. And what that is is that usually you have two second hands where you can measure a lap time while the continuous seconds keep sweeping. Okay, it's a split second. Well, you also have uh, a double split, which is also what Elanga and Songa did uh, a couple years back, uh, where basically you can split the minutes and you can split the seconds. This year, and it's uh, I think it's limited to about 100 pieces, but they're the only manufacturer that does a triple split, where you can split the hours, split the minutes, and split the seconds. And this is a beautiful beast. I took a look at it as well online. We got a link to the uh, site on Hodinkee uh, for your viewing uh, pleasure. Sup, Ben Klein? It is just this side of Tasty from a banana split. Uh, this triple split is, uh, wow, there's a lot of thought and a lot of innovation. The innovation seems to be a theme about the watches we're talking about yeah. uh, on this show. Uh, from someone that is, call me the uh, the uh, drive through burger uh, in the... Uh, when, when others are of the stake of knowledge of watches, I was highly impressed. Yeah, it's, it's I, I can't remember how many pieces are in the, the movement itself. But when you look at this thing, when you look at Langa and Songa, it doesn't matter if you are a watch person or not. You look at this thing and like, holy moly, this is a piece of mechanical art that you get to wear. And that seems to be another theme that we're going to be touching base on. Uh, we'll, we'll probably come back to this chorus about 
uh, what you are wearing on your wrist is not only functional to tell you when it's lunchtime or when it's time to go home from work or when it's time to attend the cocktail party. It's also a beautiful uh, keepsake timepiece and an art uh, piece of art, yeah. which is uh, highly impressive. Com- yeah, completely. So anyway, take a look at that uh, if you're into chronographs or if you like things that you can start and stop time with. Uh, the triple split is the banana split of all chronographs. Next up, and this I thought was just, this is kind of a shot across the technologist's bow, as it were. Uh, Piaget has a concept for, I think... It is the thinnest like watch movement ever created that is mechanical. It's two millimeters thin. Two th- millimeters <laughs> thin, and it's and and what was the uh, the watch face size? It's uh, got to be I in can't the remember. F- uh, mid to upper forties. Yeah, I, I, 30, 38, 39, 40, around yeah. in there. Uh, this is you look at this watch from the side and you're like that. It's a pancake. Like, it's Mm -hmm. remarkably thin. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is here is an instance of something that is mechanical. Nothing, nothing battery, electrical, anything is in this watch. And it is thinner than the Apple Watch. True. Uh, (laughs) As you talk about concept watch, uh, and and as I'm checking out, by the way, another link from Hodinki in our show notes. Do check this out because it's wonderful eye candy for what, what the future, we are now living in the future. But here's what occurred to me. This is a concept watch. There are other concept things out there. Namely, if you go to the Detroit Auto Show or Auto Shows, there'll be concept cars. And one thing that occurred to me is I'm looking at the... uh, the, the ultra thin watch that Piaget is coming out with, it's very similar to the Lexus 2054 in Minority Report in my mind. So in Minority Report, that movie with Tom Cruise from years back, as he's being chased by the the police, uh, he goes into a Lexus factory product placement. Thank you very much. But he comes out in this beautiful. Oh my goodness, this is such a futuristic car, driving along a country road. But we would uh, in in 2000 something when it came out we would never conceive a car that could be that cool in 2018 we uh, we have a watch now made by piaget that can capture our imagination and allow us to dream about how cool would this be to have a silver dollar thick watch yeah. on our wrist with a band one thing that i would love to see for something like this when you have these concept watches would it be something Get ready, uh, 007 fans. If James Bond happened to rock a concept watch such as this in the next Bond movie. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. yeah I mean, if, if, we always have the Omega and the Rolex uh, and back in Rolex, the day. Yeah. Exactly. You know, in my mind is I'm equating this. Such a beautiful watch. Wouldn't it be great if it made mainstream uh, media to show off just what could be done mm-hmm. uh, on your wrist? Yeah. So, I, yeah, I was really impressed. And, and boy... How could you, <laughs> you better take really good care of that watch <laughs> because, well, but yeah. I mean, like, again, like you said, it's kind of like the Detroit, uh, the, the car show or like CES when Samsung shows foldable screens. That is just a, a proof of concept. Mm-hmm. Seeing this and seeing it this thin and seeing it, 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 it is, it's, it's, it is a mechanical marvel that we are able to create something that is form and function. Yep. Skookum. Absolutely. And uh, so, yeah, do check it out. Uh, link in the show notes for Piaget's concept watch uh, from the ultra thin uh, section of Watchville. But also on the polar opposite of that spectrum from ultra thin, we've got ultra fat. Oh, yes. We're, yeah, we're, we're flipping this one on its and head. And this one's by HYT. Yes. So HYT is well known for their uh, hyd- uh, I think it's hydrostatic, I think is what it's called, where basically these are watches that instead of having uh, hands and gears, it's also got it's got like hydraulic pumps where you actually have a vial that run uh, runs inside the watch and you actually can tell time based off of the, the, the liquid level. It is crazy cool. This year they have the H2O, uh, and it's it is domed looking top that has the ring on the inside that has uh, the different color of fluids. But it, uh, to me, it almost looks like something that belongs at the bottom of the sea. It looks like a sea dwelling, and it is really cool. Well, for all of you Casio G-Shock wearers out there at parties that are you rocking this huge. Uh, sundial Horkin. on your wrist, Horkin. Uh, get ready to be trumped in coolness at the next party when you see an HYT HTO fluid uh, watch. Because while completely decimating all of the watches as far as coolness, I never considered bright green or deep blue fluid 
to be stealthy. And I believe that's how they may be describing yeah. some of the movement. Uh, you know, the, the fluid moves like a second uh, per second along the, the circle for a minute. Um, however, the two bellows inter- in, internal of the movement, which to me as, as a newbie, it looks like a Harley big twin. Yeah, seriously. Uh, the, 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 the heads double, off of an the engine. double yeah. heads stuffed into watch casing all on a sesame seed bun. It was really <laughs> uh, attention getting which may be a reason why you'd want to throw down on all this money, but yeah, uh, we are we are talking in the tens of thousands of dollars for all of these watches that we're talking about right and, now. And hashtag innovation because yes. when when was the last time you know we're talking about water sensitive, waterproof, water resistant. You got water in there, <laughs> which is uh, completely uh, thinking outside the box in a lot of ways. Yeah, and that's what that's the general theme through all of the picks. Like there was uh, other things that ha- happened during SIHH, but this was the top four that really kind of rung my bell. Last but not least is Resonance. Resonance is uh, a company where when you see their watch, it is unlike any other watch face you've ever seen. They run off of the system that they created called Rocks R O C S, and it's basically a series of discs that as the 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 time changes all of the entire face changes with it with all these different discs so you have a disc for hours a disc for minutes has no crown and here's the crazy part they've created their own self-setting mechanical watch movement or i should say module on top of their movement called the e-crown and they have this really cool very quick promo video of this gentleman in his loft apartment it's a new day and he grabs his mechanical watch double taps on the the crystal and it's and it sets its time and it's perfect time you know the the rest and e-crown uh it solves an aspect of a watch that i've never liked and that's a little thing sticking out on the side of a watch. <laughs> and yes, I know everyone's turning up their nose at, at me no, dissing no, no. on crowns. But here's the thing. This is a watch that I could see Tony Stark wearing at right? one of his product presentations because Mr. Flash, Mr. Panache is going to be having something that is like groundbreaking for Stark Industries. Mm-hmm. You just found your watch for uh, Infinity War 3 uh, yeah. whenever that comes out. Um, I've always had a problem with the crown because I'm left-handed and I will wear my watch on my left wrist and when my when my wrist moves back it it, it makes bites. contact it bites that's that's the horological term for it no that's what I'm calling it okay that's the AJ Barce <laughs> term for it but basically with my movement it will ultimately break due to my use and abuse or due to my unfortunate strength in trying to pull out the crown to adjust, uh, I might damage that. Now I don't have to worry about that. Well, and, and, and Resonance still does have, a, like, it, uh, not a crown in the traditional sense, but on the back side right. where, it, I mean, you do can still manually uh, set the, the the actual watch using their, their twist, I think it's a twist lock type of a, a crown setup. But this is just a really interesting thing that because of the way that they've created uh, their modules on top of the movement, they have the ability to add this electrical component. And what's interesting is there's like eight little hatches on the on the dial and i believe when the 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 module itself runs out of juice these hatches like open up to let in light because it's solar charged like it's just it's just it, it, this is like the best of both worlds that I, that i love in, in watches like the solar i like solar quartzes because they're grab and go and it's still it's quartz so it's dead accurate but you don't have to worry about the battery issue that you and i've talked about oh before. yeah that's my thing but I love mechanical because it just keeps a licking and keeps on ticking, you know? And I'm a fan of innovation. Yeah. And here's uh, three, four examples of real impressive innovation. And, and in our daily lives, so we're surrounded, immersed with technology. Others may be immersed with childcare. Others may be immersed with what the stock market's doing. Here's a great way to take a look and let your mind explore yeah. in the analog world about, hey, look at what great uh, developments have been uh, the evolution of uh, timepiece. And what's what I love about this uh, this topic, like even if you're listening to the show and you're like, ah, you guys are talking about watches again. But here's the thing is here is a craft that by all intents of digital purposes shouldn't be around anymore because we have other things that can tell time. We don't we're not worried about missing our train or stagecoach anymore. I only heard that the mobile phone killed the, the watch. <laughs> but it goes beyond that. Like there is art, there is innovation, there is the technology in in making these little horological machines. Like it's it's just crazy cool what has become the watch. Yep. You might be listening to us on KMRE 102.3 FM. Low 
Power Community Radio here in the heart of the city of subdued excitement. Your voice, your community, your radio station, KMRE. So uh, bridging the gap of analog and digital, Chris, tell me about your Fitbit fiasco, too. Oh, it wasn't really. Uh, yeah, fiasco, fine. We'll call it that. So I'm, I'm thoroughly. So I have, a, I have a buddy of mine. Here's a little bit of a side story. I have a buddy of mine that uh, is a, a wonderful guitarist. He's an excellent musician. And he has a bumper sticker on the back of his big truck. And it says, love one woman, many guitars. And uh, I thought that was always cool. Uh, AJ, you have many watches. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and while I've gone through my, my phase of uh, sundials and, and plates on my wrist uh, of, of some sorts, coasters, if you will, on my wrist for the big watch uh, thing. I have really enjoyed the, the experience, and thank you for wearing me down uh, in the past uh, <laughs> 2017, I believe, to have my Seiko SKX 007 uh, on my wrist. Dallied with a couple straps based on the clothing that I wear. Sure. Black and dark gray. There you go. But um, that's the analog side. But I've always been intrigued by the uh, logging of my physical fitness and that uh, I was able to find uh, with a Fitbit. And I had a Fitbit Charge HR. HR stands for heart rate, uh, where I was able to take my heart rate while it was on my wrist. And, uh, of course, with every company out there that's in tech, they have to come up with the new uh, new for this year. And for last year, there was the Fitbit Charge 2, which is a bigger screen. It had a lot more uh, features to it. It will make you breakfast in the morning, blah, 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 hyperbole. Uh, basically, I, I attempted an upgrade because I wanted to track uh, my breathing. It had a component to inhale and exhale on a, on a graphic LED screen, which was kind of nice. Plus, I like having the silent vibrating alarm to wake me up in the morning. So here's where I dive into the, the Venn diagram of analog and digital. And I had on the, my left wrist the Seik Seiko SKX 007. On my right wrist, I had my Fitbit Charge 2. Problem number one, I was unable to be awakened by its vibrating alarm. That's a showstopper. So, you know, I, that, was, that was a bit of a situation. Now, your mileage may vary for all you Fitbit Charge 2 fans out there. It may jolt you awake, but I guess I'm a heavier sleeper than I thought uh, compared to how they have the vibration settings. Second of all, um, I, I just felt like I'm carrying my iPhone with me quite frequently. And to be able to track in my, my steps and track my floors, that's already covered. Right. Uh, and then the symmetry that I would have about having a watch on every wrist I think from a social aspect, I was feeling a little sheepish. Ah, the dual wristing. Yes, but I think the vibrating alarm just wasn't uh, there for me, and so uh, I returned the Fitbit Charge too. Yeah. So uh, it was an experiment in uh, meeting, you know, meeting at the intersection, kind of like at the crossroads. That ro story about Robert Johnson, how he met the devil at the crossroads, yep. made the deal, and and he turned into awesome guitarist. Well, I tried to be at the crossroads of analog and digital, and unfortunately, I couldn't make a deal. And see, what's interesting, when I hear your story, because, I mean, you had you had the previous uh, Fitbit, too. Charge HR. Well, there's so many different yeah. kinds, but I had uh, the heart rate one and just a simple uh, LED screen with click once for steps, click two for floors, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But when I, when I hear your use case, like more and more like e-straps. We've, we've seen a few companies, uh, Alpina makes one, which is a, uh, and Frederic Constant makes one, I believe. Uh, but this is, this is the case that, you know, though that type of, uh, fashion and, and technology intersect is that, you know, some people do like wearing mechanical watches, but we just have a very limited functionality that we want to track in our daily lives, much like yourself. It'd be really, really skookum if we could find a, an e-strap for you that would like bridge that for you and be on one wrist that way. Or at least wake me up with 120 volts or something like that and would... shock me awake or something. <laughs> I would like to keep you alive, Chris. Uh, uh, well, you know, the, uh, other opinions may vary. But anyway, anyway. let's talk about another uh, uh, topic. Uh, AJ, unleash the Kraken on us. <laughs> so... So for the last year and a half, I have been diving into uh, two things. One, being a new father. And two, I had this crazy idea that I wanted to build a Swiss-powered watch here in the Pacific Northwest in Bellingham. And not for sale, just for me, so that I could gift it to my son later when he's older. And being a tech, I was like, you know, I will take the garage... Uh, approach of technology to watchmaking. I will, you know, sit in my garage and get the tools that I need, get the parts that I need, and kind of like building a PC. You know, I'll get a, I'll get a case from Germany, I'll get a dial from Switzerland, I'll get, I'll get all these parts, and I'll, I will 
learn how to do watchmaking. Wow, that is a huger task than anyone could ever think of. Are you saying that you couldn't play the solo to Eruption having never played the guitar before? <sighs> Get the guitars. Yes. So here's the thing is I I had to take several steps and I had to uh, meet many people and talk to different people online, uh, to which I'll give shout outs in a second. But the the concept of building something so small, something that literally you cannot work on without having a 7x or 4x magnification stuck onto your eye. If you're if you're a person who likes puzzles, this is like a puzzle person's worst nightmare because imagine having not only an all white puzzle, but an all white puzzle where you can't necessarily discern every shape. It is it is very tedious work. It is very rewarding work once you figure it out. Uh, but anyway, I had to make three prototypes to get to where I'm at today, which is on my wrist. And I, I announced this on Instagram. I'm actually wearing my reference PNW001 Barce original watch that I, I made for my son when he grows up. But to get here was a very long and arduous uh, uh, trip. About how long did it take you? A year and a half. So I originally I had uh, I made I started off because I like um, I kind of like the the Tudor styling styling so I got a hold of a, an homage uh, Tudor Black Bay case and I kind of went down that road because um, it's a it's a known watch I can look at and I can kind of replicate and I made a lot of uh, mistakes and I learned a lot I sourced a Salida SW two hundred dash one out of Switzerland um, I found out a couple of uh, uh, watchmakers in both Germany and Switzerland where I could source parts. And yes, from those uh, countries, there's a lot of lead time. Like it's not Amazon Prime three day shipping. Like I had to I had to wait weeks to get a single three millimeter part. That probably added to your year and a half of, de- of learning and development and, and educational moments. Yeah. And uh, getting old watchmaking books and watching tutorials and 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 so uh, I revolved this project around the SW two hundred because it's based off of the uh, ETA twenty eight twenty four, but um, it was just easier to get a hold of. It's also got an extra jewel in it, but anyway, uh, I got it and I put it all together and I wore that prototype for my son's birth, but it wasn't done. Uh, I I still had some stuff I wanted to do to it. I wanted to have a screw down crown and a screw in tube and all this other stuff, and that prototype had an untimely uh, demise where I was tapping, and anybody who's done this was, probably knows exactly what's going to happen next, I was tapping threads into the 316L stainless steel case, and the bit that uh, that I was using kind of turned a little bit too sideways and shredded into the case, and it's carbon-hardened steel and uh, stainless steel, and I it, it just seized together. So the, the case, I couldn't... So maybe someday I will figure out how to uh, bore it out, but it was totaled in my book. So I moved on and I got a new old stock skin diver case from the 1970s. Uh, and I went down the road of what if I 3D printed the retaining ring, the movement washer uh, that holds it in the case. I went down that whole road, prototyped it, got it together. Uh, didn't have the aesthetic that I was looking for. I kind of went a little bit too far uh, into the weeds design wise. Um, I still have it. It, it just, it's not, it'll probably get ripped apart and be t- turned into something else. Lastly, I found a case out of the United Kingdom uh, made by uh, Alpha uh, of Asia, I believe. And it's kind of a it's similar to the aesthetic of a Omega, um, like a Seamaster, but doesn't have the helium escape valve up on the top because I am not a diver, nor do I play one on podcast. But that may be your next hobby after making so many of these watches. Maybe. Uh, But no, it's got the the twisted lug style. It's got the the crown kind of sinks into the case to kind of give it a guard. Uh, I really liked its aesthetic. Um, it's a 42 millimeter case. Uh, it's, uh, it is pressure rated to five atmospheres. One of the things I found out by doing this whole process is I don't need a Horkin watch. Like the, the deeper these watches get, the thicker they get. And so I, I needed to minimize it because this is a daddy duty watch. It needs to survive drool and bath time. I'm not going to, I'm not James Cameron. So I had to make some concessions and in doing so I learned the different engineering side of things and design side of things. 
uh, to build this watch. And the dial uh, is a, uh, it's a, it's a unique dial. It's basically a diver's dial with a, the date at three uh, luminous uh, pips all the way around. It's got a fully indexed dial where it's got seconds and half seconds on it. Uh, and there's uh, Arabic noodles at uh, 12 o'clock. And the handset is the Tudor snowflake style handset, which is what I absolutely adore. But that combination is uh, on top of the Kraken, uh, which is my project of just doing leather work uh, strap that I uh, uses uh, American based leather that I hand cut sewed right here in Bellingham. So And so for all of you that are listening to this right now and you're like, this is a great visual picture, but I want to see this watch. It's on my Instagram. And that Instagram is actually uh, search for AJ B A R S E AJ Barse on Instagram. You will see the Bellingham Kraken, uh, the, the PNW <laughs> the refer- 001 Barse. Reference PNWZ 001. That's right. Exactly. Uh, but no, it's, it just, it's really cool because, you know, uh, the whole purpose of this is I originally wanted it to from my, my son's birth forward. I missed the mark because I was a little bit ambitious. I could not get a Swiss powered watch built in three months, not knowing anything. But here's the thing. You need to allow yourself some type of grace for the amount of education and the process. Yeah. Because as you were handing this watch off to your son in 2040, 2045, yeah. whenever, uh, you will have a story to go with it. Every watch has a story. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And, and uh, But I mean that because yeah. every important watch has a story. And yes, your tagline with your photography at uh, ajbarsay.com or patreon.com slash ajbarsay, every moment has a story. You've had a year and a half of moments. Yes. Some good, some bad. Yes. And so, but the, the more important thing is, is like he... Like this will be the watch through photos and our family trips that he'll remember because basically since I got this completed, I haven't really taken it off my wrist. Uh, that's the whole purpose of this is he he'll grow up remembering oh, this is dad's watch. My, I've told that story on the show before. Like that was the story for me is I remember my dad's watch. So I'm really excited about it. Absolutely. So, uh, and two shout outs, by the way, on that project, I really, the, the two guys that, uh, commiserated with me because I bound up the there's a function of the watch where when you put the crown in uh, the stem uh, interacts with this keyless uh, part of the, the the movement and anybody who's worked on an ETA 2824 or an SW uh, 200 knows like the keyless works on this thing are really finicky if you don't set it correctly and I've done that a f- more times than I can curse on on, on a podcast but uh, at EA8 and at buying on time those two guys like this one evening when I thought I was going to be done and I botched everything I just vented and those two guys hopped on and just kind of uplifted be like hey just hang in there it happened to me too so you two guys you're the goods and the watch family will not let you hang yeah. Uh, you will not walk alone, laddie. Yeah. Uh, walk with pride. This is a great looking watch. It looks customized. This is not something that you'd find at your typical retail department store or something like that, discounted for twenty nine ninety five. That looks like it's, one, got a story behind it. Two, it's not a common watch of, by any means whatsoever. Good job. Thanks. So speaking of uh, of makering and making and stuff, uh, I got a little piece of uh, mail over the holiday, Chris. And who was it from? Well, it came from Spain, which actually kind of threw me off because I wasn't getting any watch parts for the, the watch out of Spain. So I had to go down to the post office, and in the mail was a thank you from Erica's from Erica's Originals. Oh, yes. Hello, Erica. Yeah. So uh, the last late last year, I did a little piece on the, the Marine National, and I brought up that I'd, I'd finally gotten my hands on one of her Erica's Originals vintage strap, and I was over the moon about it. Well, anyway, uh, that episode got a lot of uh, great comments, and, and she actually heard from our listeners about her watch wraps from our show. So she sent a little thank you. And she sent me a uh, brand new, it just came out uh, in January, uh, one of her new products called the Mirage Loom Centerline um, Marine National Strap. And what's cool about this is, well, one, Erica, you are the goods. Two, this strap, much like I said before, is like wearing your favorite hoodie on a weekend for your watch. Like, it is comfortable. It works with everything. It's minimal in the fact that it has two buckles and a parachute-inspired uh, clasp that hooks over it. It stretches. It's rigid. It's water-resistant. And with this new strap, it glows. 
I like things that glow. <laughs> so the the if you if you go to her uh, website, Erica's Originals, you'll see the Mirage strap. It's gray. It's got a white line through it, but the white line is a loom stripe. And what's cool about it is I had to email her about it because this is a really cool piece of technology, a fabric technology. So if you charge it up just by light, it will glow just like your dial of your dive watch. It is really cool. And it, I was like, huh, I wonder how that works. And what's interesting is because immediately I'm like, okay. So I, I, when I asked her, I was like, you know, is this super luminova? Is it a paint coating? Like, what is it? Uh, the material isn't a dye. The loom is actually a part of the core material in the twine. The, the, inside the twine. Yeah. So this, this is some it's, serious. It, yeah, this is some cool engineering. Absolutely. So uh, I found out from her that the material is actually uh, created, uh, it's engineered for her by a large petrochemical company in Germany. And uh, this strap came out of basically uh, kind of like prototypes that she had brought to this fair over in New York City that we've, we've talked about for called Wind Up. And she decided to start making it. And what's cool about it is the loom, uh, she says that it, you can have an expected loom life of about four years exposed to daylight. Um, but after that, like, okay, so the loom goes away. It's still a good looking strap. Gray with a white stripe in a vintage MN style. Really skook them. And I'm, I'm assuming that you have a picture of this with your watch on your Instagram. Well, it'll, yeah, it, and it'll also be the cover of this episode, Chris. Well, there you go. <laughs> so check out uh, Erica's Originals um, Mirage MN strap on our, uh, on this podcast. Yeah. She has it available in 20, 22, and 24 millimeter lug width. So Panerai lovers, you'll you'll love that. Hi, Panerai lovers. Along those same lines with the Mirage Loom uh, center line, she's also going to be putting out two other colors, which is going to be really skookum. Uh, the Trident, which will be a dark navy blue. And then also a Sahara, which will probably be like a khaki type of a thing. And they'll have uh, different center line options as well. I just... Erica, your designs are the goods. I mean, the, this is really cool. On top of that, she also disclosed to me that um, this strap, the, the, the Marine National straps that she makes, get ready, technology fans, because it's coming to the Apple Watch. Apple Watch? Yeah. Okay. So, so over Christmas time, she showed a snapshot of her strap on a Apple Watch, which immediately I go, well, how are you going to do that? Because it's a, it's a pass through. It, it t- goes across the back of the watch. She's making it into a two piece with the Apple lug adapter so that basically you have a two piece Marine National strap with the Skookum hardware. So you can micro adjust it and it's stretchy. And this will make any Apple Watch lover a happy person. So now here's a question for you, AJ. There are two types of Apple watches. There's like the, the, the bigger one for the guys and the smaller one for the for the smaller wristed among us. Uh, it, how is the, how are these straps going to work for that? So just like I said with the strap, uh, the normal strap, she has different sizes. She's made this for 20. Uh, basically, the strap size will be 24 uh, millimeters for the 42 millimeter Apple watch. And it'll be 22 me, uh, millimeters for the 38 uh, ladies Apple watch. There you go. Sounds good. So you can. Uh, uh, Apple Watch owners, got you covered. Yep. It's uh, great news, too, to hear uh, for getting a, such a high-quality strap on some uh, pretty cool technology, too. So, speaking of what's cooking, Chris, what's uh, coming down the pike for you? Well, as, we're, as we've trudged through January, and it's amazingly dreary weather here in the Northwest, uh, continuing with my weekly newsletter, Quiet Conversations, and, you know, check our website out. You can stalk me on the Internet. You'll, you'll find it uh, linked if you want to sign up for... Uh, thoughtful curated uh, essays and uh, life insights. But along with January, uh, continuing to uh, push forward with my efforts to read one physical book a month. Uh, and I've been learning a lot about Linux Mint, uh, the, the Linux operating system on my burner laptop. Check a previous episode for information on that. And uh, I found my Instagram photo for the month of January. Uh, if you happen to check my Instagram, which is in by no means any comparison with any watch fam people out there, uh, I'm minimal tech on Instagram, uh, M-N-M-L-T-E-K. I'm so minimal. I don't like many vowels. Uh, <laughs> but I did get a great shot of a trip I took with my wife for our recent anniversary uh, with Sing Along If You Know the Words, SKX007, as it is in front of the Pacific Ocean. I enjoyed that shot. It captured a moment. So uh, January's Instagram moment. Check. Uh, <laughs> but otherwise, just continuing on with the content. Uh, I'm also teaching a bunch of uh, tech classes at the local community college here in Bellingham. And uh, I enjoy sharing information. And uh, there's a lot more of that where that came from. So, you know, I have opportunities in the horizon and I'm thoroughly enjoying being a technologist that's not 
uh, closed fisted about their knowledge. I want to have an open hand to be able to share with people uh, how to de-stress their life with technology. So what's going on in uh, your professional and personal life or what do you got on your content plate, AJ? Uh, well, just doing, uh, I mean, now that my, my watch is done. Uh, yay! Yay! Uh, just going out and, and enjoying life with it. Uh, so one of the things I picked up uh, at auction was a vintage uh, Fujika ST605. Uh, it's a vintage 35 millimeter camera. I'm going to repair it and re- kind of restore it back to its original glory and probably rack some Milford film in it. And that'll probably, the my efforts of that will be on my Patreon, patreon.com slash AJ Barce. And then in February, once we get into February, you'll probably go for PNW002, right? I, I don't know about that. Like I said, this this whole project was just for my son. And like I said, I, I, I've i learned more about watchmaking and watches and engineering and design uh, in a year and a half than probably the last five and a half years. Because the thing about this is everything everything is designed in these things for a purpose. Everything is purpose driven. For what you're doing, uh, this is this is inspiration. This is incentive. This is a project. This is a goal. This is a labor of love. And uh, I know there's going to be a PNW002 sometime. Uh, you're shaking your head. Yeah, I, I don't know. believe you. I, I think know. you got a number, a number two <laughs> up your sleeve. You just don't want to release the information yet. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not in it to to be a watchmaker. Like I, I. Here's the thing: is I don't care if it's a, a Longue or a or an SKX or this one that I made the the PNW001. Like, what's cool about it is there is an appreciation for the fact that this thing this piece of technology will be a part of my life and then I will be able to pass it down to my son. That means more to me than anything else. And the fact that it's driven by the components and design that I loved. Um, My son may not like the snowflake hands, but he'll look back and then go, yeah, that was my pops. You know, that's what's great about this watch. It has all of the design elements and engineering elements that I wanted. I wanted a case that was uh, waterproof. Okay. Five atmospheres, more than enough for daily use has luminous uh, dial because, you know, when I'm taking care of him, when he's sick for the last two weeks at night, I can see that I was up at 4 a.m. Uh, luminous hands in the the snowflake design, the half seconds and using a hacking and hand windable movement. And these are all things that I like. And that's part of what this heirloom is going to be about. Take note, watch fam. There's a new watchmaker on the horizon. Nope. His name's AJ nope. Barce. Nope. Hashtag B-H-A-M-P-O-D-C-A-S-T if you want to give him some love. Nope. Follow him on Instagram. You heard it here first. <laughs> that All you right. can do. All right. There you go. <laughs> that wraps it up for this edition of the Bellingham Podcast. Thank you again so much for listening to us, rating us, reviewing us on iTunes, Google Play, and even Chris's favorite, Tune in radio, my favorite app. <laughs> even on Tune in radio. If you're in the Bellingham area, you might be listening to us on KMRE 102.3 FM. Low power. Community radio here in the heart of the city of subdued excitement. Thursdays at 9 a.m., Saturdays at 1.30 p.m. Don't forget to tune in to listen to us. On that note, from the City by the Sailor Sea, I am AJ Barce. And I'm Chris Powell. Thanks again for joining us here on the Bellingham Podcast. <laughs> we record that ending please i want to make that cleaner (laughs) let's let's make that cleaner please do that on that note my name is chris powell and thank you so much for joining us here on the bellingham podcast and i'm aj (laughs) barsay good night folks